Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swuss. Uh, talking RBC Heritage. I mean, the golf season officially starts for me uh, when the Masters happens. I know the season's been going for a month or two now, uh, but now I'm into it. I, I hit my Xander Schauffele top 10 bet last weekend, feeling pretty good. Uh, with me, I have the big, nasty golf resident expert. Um, so I think the first question, obviously, everyone watched last weekend. What's the price on Scotty Scheffler? Is it four to one to win again? Yeah, it's uh, he's at plus four fifty right now on Fanduel. Um, is it worth like? Is it worth taking a shot at that price? I, I don't see the value in it. Listen, he's coming off of you know three out of his last four wins. He's also uh, that one that he didn't win was a second place finish. Um, so the guy is hotter than hot. Wait, wait, but, wait. So he has three first place finishes and one second in his last four tournaments? In his last four tournaments, it is win, win, second place, win. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty um, impressive. So it, it's really hard to bet against him, but at the same time, this is an elevated PGA Tour event, which means the field is smaller and the best players currently on the PGA Tour are playing in it. So, you know, it's it's really, really hard to find the value at plus 450 or plus 400 in a lot of sports books right now. I got you. I mean, with three firsts in a second, it does make sense why he's so expensive. Um, so let's, why don't we start with, well, who would be your pick to win the tournament that isn't named Scotty Scheffler? How about that? Oh, uh, well, I mean, he's he's definitely up there. You, you won on him last week at Augusta. I mean, Xander Schauffele is right there. Um, when you talk about the RBC heritage and what the golf course plays like, it's, it's not so much your traditional golf course. It really rewards your, your ball strikers and your iron players. Um, you don't really have to rely on that game off the tee. It's, it's really one of those courses where you have to hit it in the right spots and you really have to be on with your wedge game and your, your iron game to really to do well there. So I'm going to look at a guy, uh, probably like a Patrick Cantlay. Would be Ooh, I like Pat Cantlay. Um, he's been playing well of late, you know, finishing the top 10 at Augusta. Um, you know, I, I think that he's played well here at the RBC Heritage in the last couple of years, if you look at you know, past results for the last three years. You can find Pat Cantlay in the top 10 uh, in the past couple of years. So I think number one, he fits the mold in terms of how he strikes his irons. But number two, he also, based on his past results, plays this course typically well. So I think that, you know, you could probably get him, you know, in the in the realm of like a 16 to one uh, to be a winner. Um, not exactly sure on those odds, but we can certainly look them up. I'll look them up, right? I mean, I'm just adding Patrick Camp late to my list of possible bets here, and I can pull up some odds. All right, here it is. Patrick Cantlay plus 1,600 on draft. Yeah, you nailed it. Plus 1,600 exactly. It actually looks like you can get 24. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. So those that's his odds to win the PGA Championship. Okay. So plus 1,600 is to win RBC Heritage. Let's look at it. It's plus 350 top five, uh, top 10 plus 160. Top 10, one plus 160. The reason I like that is that's the exact bet I placed on Xander Schauffele in the Masters. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely it's definitely a play that I have circled down at plus 160 odds. Definitely gives you a little bit more wiggle room. I think you still find good value in a top 10. And like I said, if you go and look at the past results from the RBC Heritage in the last two years, he's right there in the top 10 in, in both years. So okay. um, I, I think it's it's a great play. I think you have good odds right now, um, so I would that would be something that I would be circling if I'm making a list of what are what are my top you know five bets of the week. Okay, so Cantlay, I got him down. Now before we move on to the next thing, is there another guy that fits that description? You said iron play is huge, your approach shots are huge. Was there another guy besides Cantlay that would that would benefit that comes to yeah, mind? Yeah, so I mean, listen, these guys are the best in the world, right? So when you're talking about you know iron play, they're all you know who's who's playing the best irons that week. But I'm talking when you're thinking about the purest ball strikers in the world, who pops up in my mind. Uh, a guy who has never won on the PGA Tour, uh, again, played at Augusta really well, always seems to find himself around that top 20, top 10 area, but he can't seem to get Fleetwood. it done on the PGA Tour. 
Mr. Tommy Fleetwood. I knew you were going to say it. I, as soon as you said it, I was like, pretty sure Fleetwood has never won. Um, all right, so Fleetwood, top 10s, plus 200, plus 425, top 5, and plus 2,000 to win. So similarly placed, a little, little cheaper than Cantlay. So I have Fleetwood. And you know what? Every single time, Tommy Fleetwood, I, I, I it's kind of crazy that he hasn't won because I feel like he's always there. He is he is there day in and day out, and it's 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 almost mind boggling why he can't seem to get it done. You know his his all around play is so good that it almost has him in the conversation every week. But it's like it's almost like Scotty Scheffler two years ago. He was on the up and coming. It was like he was right there, top five, top ten, top twenty, and then he just turned that corner. And then for Scotty, all of a sudden. You know, once you figure miss. out how to win on the PGA Tour, you can't miss. And I could certainly see, you know, Tommy Fleetwood fall into that category. Strikes the ball so well, um, is always in it. You know, I think that's that's some good value on Tommy. So I got can't lay in Tommy Fleetwood. All right. So do we want to do we want to throw out a sleeper pick? Do you got a sleeper pick? I, people love the home run swings. So yeah. So I mean, talking about you know an elevated tour event, right? Somebody who we haven't really heard a lot about, um, who I think you're getting great value for, is a past champion at this event. Webb Simpson, to finish in the top 20 on FanDuel, is plus 330 odds right now. Like I said, past champion. Uh, he fits the mold in terms of being a good ball striker, but as he's aged a little bit, has lost some distance off the tee. But that's really not a a huge factor here at the RBC Heritage. So I think if you're looking for a little bit of a sleeper play, a little bit of a value play, I think you can go on down to, to Webb Simpson and grab him plus uh, 330. For, for pretty good odds. Yeah, plus 330, top 20 is a nice price. I remember when he won, what was that major he won where he won by like 10 strokes? I believe it was the PGA Championship. Yeah, we got all excited. We were having a barbecue. Got all excited to watch the final day, and he had it clinched by like yeah. an hour in. It was over. Yeah. I remember um, that. You know, again, you know, Webb is is a guy that, like you said, haven't heard a lot of him lately. He picks and chooses. I think you know some of the events that he's that he wants to play in now that he's kind of becoming a senior, I guess, on the PGA Tour. Um, but I, again, the, the value, you can't argue, getting a past champion to finish in the top 20 at, at that price, um, I, I just see that, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good play. Cool. So we got three written down. Is there anyone else you want to mention before we close it? I mean, just a couple of honorable mentions. I mean, right now, if Matt Fitzpatrick, returning champion, has been playing really, really good golf lately. Um, again, a phenomenal iron striker is minus 110 to finish in the top 20. Um, I think that, you know, if you're looking for kind of a, a safer play, number one, as a returning champion, you always want to put your best foot forward. Um, talking about, like I said, you know, coming in, he's played really well of late, finished in the top 20, I think three out of his last four starts. Um, I think at minus 110, you're now basically getting one for one on your money. I think that's a pretty safe play. Okay. Um, and then another guy that you have pretty good odds on right now who's not playing the best golf is Mr. Jordan Spieth. Uh, Spieth. Jordan, Jordan is a winner in 2022 at RBC Heritage. He lost last year in a playoff against Matt Fitzpatrick at RBC Heritage. So, you know, won it the year before, finished second you know, second place last year, has a couple top 10s and top 20s in the event in the past. I think that right now you can get Jordan to finish in the top 20 at plus 100. I think he's coming off a fuming miscut at Augusta. I think, you know, I, I might try to ride that Jordan train and see if he can get back on, uh, back on the, the off the schneid here. <laughs> All right, cool. So I got five names. I like the first three. I like the Fitzpatrick play too. Returning champion, top 20, at basically yeah. a pick them. I like Yeah, that. I mean, I think, like I said, you know, you're not really getting a ton of value there. However, you know, if you're a guy who likes to bet a little bit bigger and you're looking for kind of a, that safer play where you're getting one-to-one -one on your money, I think that's kind of where you want to go um, in that realm. I'll tell you one guy who I would kind of stay away from is Rory McIlroy. Um, I think, number one, the price is too high. Uh, Rory drives the ball exceptionally well. 
his wedge game and his iron game as of late, he hasn't really been, you know, falling in line um, in terms of what the RBC Heritage calls for. So, you know, if Rory has an off week with his driver, you know, I, I, I would definitely kind of stay away. Like I said, I don't think you get good price odds on him anyway, um, but a guy that I would probably fade uh, going into this week. Got it. Yeah, I would never bet Rory anyway. Not a fan. <laughs> Um, but I like Cantlay and Fleetwood. I'm tailing those two for sure. And I think I'm going to tail that Webb Simpson, that home run swing. I like it. Yeah. And one of the, the cool things about this event um, is because it's an elevated event, you know, the, the field is smaller. There's no cut. They actually have a couple of, you know, 72 hole matchups. Um, and actually Patrick Cantlay over Rory McIlroy, 72 hole overall score is plus a 105. So if you do like Cantlay and you're fading Rory, um, I think that's a good bet to go ahead and throw down. Um, can't lay on the 72 hole matchup. So the yep. whole, not day one, the entire nope, tournament. Not day one. I like it for the whole, the whole tournament. Um, I think again, you're, you're plus money there. I think it's good value. I think again, you look at where these two players have been over the last month of, of the season. I think can't lay on the upswing and Rory's kind of just fizzled in the middle there. So, uh, another just bonus kind of play, if if you will. Got it. Cool. All right. So you're good to uh, next Wednesday, next Wednesday light. Let's see if uh, I know there's a lot of people that the betting market and golf is rising. So I'd like to have a, a weekly video. So let's do this again next Wednesday night. Sounds good. Happy to happy to oblige. And, uh, you know, let's let's go. Let's go. Uh, I, I think I'm going to jump on that. I think my play this week is Patrick Cantlay. I think. I think in terms of, of getting it done, he's got what it takes. He's got the history, and, and I'm going to ride that one with you. Let's do it. Can't lay up. All right, guys. Just see you next week.